We've now created two tasks, but of course we can't see them at the moment because we need some way to first of all, grab these from the database. We need to pass them into this view and then we need to loop through them and output them. So let's get started then on working out how to pull these tasks back. Now we're going to do this obviously within this route because this is the route that displays our view. So we want to pass that data down to this view. It's the only view we have, and then we can loop through and output them. So let's start by checking out how we do this. I'm going to create a tasks variable just here, and I'm going to use the task model. And what we're looking at now is eloquence query builder. So this means that normally you'd write an SQL query, you would say something like select name from tasks, and you would order by created at in ascending, for example, so it would uh, have the uh, latest on the top or the latest on the bottom. So to do this within Laravel, we use methods like order by, we can use methods like where, we can use methods like where in, there are loads of these to build up queries. What we're interested in though is just ordering these but in ascending order by the created at date. And then we use the get method just here. So we're saying task, which remember relates to our tasks table. We want to order all of these. So this just assumes we're grabbing all of them. And we then say get. Now get will return us. Normally when you work with PHP, you'll find it will return you either an object or an array. In this case, what we get is a collection. So a collection is just a helper. Think of it as just a helper for data. Now, in this case, we have two items. We have a task model and a task model. Now, if you've worked with PDO before, you'll know that what you can do is fetch, an ob uh, fetch data by an object. And this is fairly similar to what's happening here. We just have two task objects. So that's exactly what we're getting back. And we can iterate through collections. We can loop through all of the items. We can grab the first item from a collection. So for example, we could say something like first just here, and that would give you the following. This is the pub just happens to be the first task. We can do a variety of different things. And at first this might seem a bit confusing, but eventually it will become really easy and you will just start to be able to write your queries out this way. So now we have this task variable, but we need to pass it into our view because it currently won't be in scope. So we can do this a variety of ways. We can either pass an array as the second argument and we can say tasks and then give that tasks variable. This would work. And we go over here and we now have this available in here ready to use. Or we can do something like this. We can say with, then we can pass an array of data similar to what we did before. Or what we can do is use with tasks. Now what this will do is it will automatically detect that this is what you want to call uh, the variable. And then you could just pass in tasks. Now it's entirely up to you which one you use. I personally prefer either using with and then passing an array in or passing an array in here. It really doesn't matter what you do. If it starts to get messy, look back at it and think, how can I do this better? In our case though, we have a very simple example where we're just passing one thing through to a view. So I'm gonna leave it like this for now, but of course feel free to change it depending on your personal style. Okay, so now we have the tasks collection available in our view. So how do we start to iterate through this? Well, we just use a for each loop. Everything else will be taken care of for us. So if we go over to tasks and index, we want to do this underneath uh, the panel that we've already created. So we're going to come down just here. First thing I want to do is create an if statement to actually check if we have any tasks. So to do this, I'm going to say tasks count. Now, remember, this is a collection. Count is a method that we have available on Laravel collection. So that's how we can do that. You can alternatively, like we saw with validation, do count tasks and check that it's greater than zero. It's entirely up to you what you do. I just prefer doing tasks count, a little bit more readable. So now if this is the case, we can just say we have tasks. And if we just head over here, you'll expect to see we have tasks, perfect. So now we want to create a new panel. So I'm going to create a panel again with a class of panel default, again, just bootstrap styling. And inside of here, we want a panel heading this time. And inside of here, we're just going to say current tasks. 
and down here underneath the panel heading we want a panel body and this is where we're going to list our tasks so we'll list our tasks just in there so this is what this currently looks like so we're going to do this within a table of course we're just playing around here so a uh, table makes sense so let's create our, our table out we're going to create a class here of table and we will set this striped and inside of here then we have a table head we have a table header which is task and the second part of this table will just be the button so we can just put a non-breaking uh, space in there for now so now for the table body this is where we start to need to iterate through so to start looping we're going to create a for each we're going to say for each tasks as task we're going to go ahead and end that for each just there now inside of here the markup is obviously going to be a table row then we're going to have a cell just here into this we can just place in our task name so task name so notice we're using a property to access this that is just because we're working with a task model now so now when we refresh we see learn laravel and learn php our two tasks that we've created and we can go ahead and enter another one as well like so and that will just add to the list so what we've now done is output the tasks that we currently have stored inside of the database and that is it now of course what we now want to do is move on to the next part where we're going to look at deleting tasks now this might seem fairly straightforward but in actual fact there's a few things that we need to watch out for here so we'll cover that in the next part